Hey, it is your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great and important and interesting topic and that is why is it so difficult to confront a manipulator? Why is it so difficult to confront a malignant narcissist or a psychopath? Someone who is really taking advantage of others, they engage in a lot of grandiose thinking, grandiose thoughts, behaviors that make them feel superior to others. They act with a sense of entitlement, um, over above the top risk taking behaviors. Attention always has to be on them. There's very little discussion or interest on you. They're not curious or interested in how you're doing. In fact, if your DNA is less than perfect, then you might find yourself on the devalue and discard plank. You know, you come up with an illness, you lose a job, your hair is out of place, you don't have the right jeans on, you don't have the right shoes, you don't have the right coffee maker, you're not drinking the right type of smoothie. I mean, everything and anything is up for target when you're in a relationship with these individuals. In fact, Oftentimes, if you're not doing things to please them or appease them, oftentimes the relationship will start to fizzle. Why do we have such a difficulty con you know, confronting them and say, this is how I'm comfortable. This is what I like. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. Why are we so afraid of confronting a narcissist who has lied, a psychopath who has cheated, um, you know, uh, been just a persona or a sham or a mask to us. Why is it so difficult? Well, we are oftentimes taught early in our life not to question authority. We are taught to be obedient. We're taught to not ruffle the feathers, not upset the apple cart. We're taught to just follow along, go along with the group think, go along with the popular opinion. You know, and it's not always advocated to think for yourself, be an outsider, be original, <laughs> be an entrepreneur. There, you know, oftentimes this is not encouraged. So people get programmed and conditioned to not question or not step up and have the audacity to look at the authority if it's immoral and actually do something about it. It's oftentimes better to have blind obedience. We're taught that oftentimes in our our um, in our uh, uh, childhood relationships when we're very young children, um, we might have been scolded for standing up for our truth. We might have been told, you know, no, don't say that. No, don't make a scene. And so we learn very quickly not to call out the problems. Um, you know, oftentimes children are very sensitive to the problems of their parents, their drinking problems, their eating problems, their financial problems. Children are very sensitive to the emotions of their the adult figures, their caregivers, especially their parents. And if they are upset, angry, crying, screaming, raging, fighting, the children often think, conceive that they're like a sponge and that it must be something to do with them, that they are not good enough, they're not fun enough, they're not smiling enough, and then they adopt a position where they have to feel like they then have to walk on eggshells and then, you know, live according accordingly, be very quiet, be mouse-like, don't say anything, do any, don't do anything, just keep a stiff upper lip, and, you know, we're just, this is just how life is. So they're not always taught, you know, that you know, what, yes, what you're saying or feeling is correct. They're not given that validation. Um, and this can make it very difficult or later in life than to change because really anything that you've encountered through your ages, you know, zero to five is your truth. So those programs, those conditions within your mindset, which have been set forth in those very formative years is your truth. And then anything that comes up against that feels like a violation of your truth. So if you were taught to take the abuse, then later in your life, you will repeat that, you will play that out, you'll act, like, you'll act that out in many a sundry forms. Well then, you will then take the abuse. 
You'll take the abuse from lovers. You'll take the abuse from employers. You'll take the abuse from organizations. You'll perpetuate the abuse. You'll get into financial trouble, um, you know, alcohol trouble, drug trouble, eating trouble, gambling trouble. You'll be playing out the same trouble that you were programmed to say that, you know, you will experience in life, that this is life. So it will play it out just like a command. So that's why it's important to understand that you have to become aware of these programs and dismantle the ones that are not serving you. And even if they're in your permanent records, you know, your permanent files of your mindset, it's time to say, whoa, you know, that was established um, at a time when someone did not have emotional intelligence. This person, you know, um, did not know better. They did not program me according to my um, my truth, you know, my actual truth, which is better serving me now and the greater of society now. And so I'm going to recondition myself to understand that it is okay to speak up against in ethical uh, situations. It is okay to call out um, an abuser. It is okay to not tolerate this. It is okay, you know, for me to step away, I will find others. I won't feel lonely. I won't feel depressed. I won't feel isolated when I step out because I know that this is my new truth and I need to engage in this. It is okay for me to be a leader within myself. Um, you know, if you were not taught that earlier on, then you need to make this part of your truth moving forward. It's the perpetuation. It's oftentimes those truths which were programmed within within us um, to, you know, appeal to this blind obedience, um, and often to not be able to recognize those people who have no conscience. So in other words, as we grow in life, it's important for us to learn, acknowledge, and validate that there are people who have no conscience. It's not, it has nothing to do with us. It's nothing that we've permitted them. It's just how they exist. So we need to then better educate ourselves to understand and identify those people who do, do not have a conscience and then make no part of engagement, do not have any sort of your life um, with them. Um, and so, you know, and it's making that declaration within yourself that you can, will, and are standing up to it. You've identified it and now you're separating yourself from the boys, from the men, the girls, you know, from the women, the sociopathic from the non-sociopathic. -so You're being able to understand and categorize and make that assessment for yourself. That can take your healing to the next level so that you don't perpetuate that feeling of being afraid, of feeling worried all the time, not feeling good enough, not feeling that you're unlovable, that um, you don't dress well, cook well, um, anything well, you know, all those whatever it is for you. It is to eliminate those negative self-assessments, get rid of the hyper, you know, critical side that has been instilled that keeps you blindly obedient to those who are judgmental and have no conscience. So it's important that you kind of really dissolve or erase that erroneous programming and conditioning and then begin to program and condition yourself on command according to what you do value. What is your personal power? What is your personal good? What is your personal purpose? What are you actually driven to do? What is your mission? What is your energy moving forward? Where, what is it that excites you and you do well and is natural and where you feel engaged within yourself and congruent, especially with all of your seven senses? Inclu that means all of your five senses, including your intuition and your conscience. So it's waking up to that higher, that higher skill, that higher knowledge, that higher sense. It's, you know, saying, yes, um, uh, self, I, and spirit, yes, self and spirit and higher spirit, you know, which reigns within this world. I acknowledge your presence in my life and I have unrefuted evidence that I am love and I have a higher spirit and a higher energy, which is able to promulgate and assist me to grow and move forward. And I call forth and I invoke this energy and this skill to help guide me through life. And I, I ask that you show me the way how to engage in this better existence using all of my senses to the betterment of myself 
the energizing of myself and the energizing of mankind. Please show me what that is. Show me what to do and I will receive. Please show me the signs to better follow my intuition, follow my conscience so that it will, will take my life fully in that new direction with a new feeling, a new experience and where I can program and condition myself on command towards accomplishing those things which I want to accomplish, deserve to accomplish and will accomplish in a balanced manner. Balanced meaning that you're not in a frenetic, crazy state, you know, while trying to live, that your life is in balance. You can accomplish these in specific, you know, amounts of time, blocking amounts of time, you know, making sure that you still eat, you still sleep, you have relationships, you have your income, that all these kind of parts of the pie that make up you are all settled and balanced. And when you're able to do this, then you'll be able to acknowledge and turn away from those negative influences in life and no longer be impacted. It is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.